Hello, I'm Abibi and you are listening to The Abibi Show, a program that invites you to share your moments of joy, but also your sorrows. If you have had an experience that makes you want to leave your job, your spouse, a friend, or even your church, we want to hear from you. We want you to share your stories with us. In the previous post, we mentioned the infamous Berlin Conference of 1885. Well, let's talk about it in details. The beginning of the actual problems of the African continent started in 1380. The king of Aragon had just offered the Catalan atlas to King Charles V of France. On the map, the portrait of the wealthiest African leaders in history of the Malian Empire in West Africa. Mansa Musa, holding a gold nugget, symbolizes the wealth of an entire continent. It triggers the appetite for the conquest of Europeans. Then, Europe discovered that it was on the margins of the largest trading area of the time in Africa. In the 15th century, the Iberian Reconquista marked the beginning of the Western era with the Portuguese, who were the first to extend their domination, especially on the seas. This enterprise is possible thanks to the invention of the caravel, which will allow the Portuguese to bypass Africa and find a new route to India after the Ottoman took control of the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea, marking the travel for all Europeans. During this adventure, these Portuguese navigators will stop on the coasts of the Black Continent. These stopovers will become counters, and later, all the powers of Europe will adopt the Portuguese model. For centuries, they traded slaves on the coast before turning their attention to what lay beyond. At the beginning of the 19th century, the objective was to develop commercial exchanges, geographical discoveries, anthropological studies, or even missions of evangelizations of populations to facilitate colonization. In the middle of the 19th century, while exploring the lands and navigating the rivers, the European powers discovered that the continent was richer than they thought, especially with the discovery of the diamond mines of the Transvaal, which further stirred up the European appetite for conquest. Quickly, a frantic competition for the control of the territories begins in Africa. In 1830, France occupied Algeria and the interior of Senegal. France is ahead of the Italians in Tunisia in 1884. It takes possessions of the current Republic of Congo and occupies Guinea. In 1882, the United Kingdom seized Egypt, a province of the Ottoman Empire before occupying Sudan and the current region of Somaliland. The same year, Italy announced its intention in East Africa, an area covered by the British and the Germans. The latter also established protectorates over Togo in 1883, Cameroon in 1884, and placed under the protection of the right of Southeast Africa. In the Central Africa, territorial quarrels between French, English, Portuguese, and Belgians will be the last straw. It was in this contest that in 1884, the Berlin Conference was organized to regulate colonization. To truly understand the direct causes of the organization, we must travel to Central Africa in 1879. It was at this time that the King of Belgium created an international association of Congo, which had economic objectives. However, it remains in contact 
with the International African Association, which was also created by Leopold II three years earlier and himself offered philanthropic ambitions. The American explorer Henry Morton Stanley was subsequently commissioned to travel to Congo with the secret mission of establishing a state, the future Congo Free State, of which he will be the head on behalf of the International African Association. At the same time, France confirmed its interest in the region. Officer Pierre Savarian de Braza traveled up to the Congo Basin to found Brazzaville in 1881. Portugal relied on previous treaties signed with the Congo Empire to claim sovereignty over the same territories, especially seeing the British make agreements with indigenous chiefs in the coastal regions. It follows an Anglo-Portuguese negotiation which evolves favorably when the English learn in 1882 the nature for the benefit of France of the treaty between Savoignan de Braza and Makoko, king of the Batekes, on the right bank of the Congo River. England, therefore, chose to favor Portugal, which was less dangerous than France, and on February 26, 1884, its government signed a treaty recognizing Portuguese sovereignty over the entire mouth of the Congo River. France opposes its agreements. King Leopold II also intervenes. Otto von Bismarck, the most powerful man at that time, saw in this series of incidents an opportunity to assert himself even more in Africa and decided to organize the Berlin Conference on November 15, 1884. The conference was therefore intended to regulate the division of the continent to avoid conflicts between European powers. Diplomats who did not know Africa because they have never set foot there will nevertheless decide its fate. Nothing was spared to attest to the international character of the conference, which explains the very high number of invited countries. We found in Berlin a first circle of countries more directly concerned. The United Kingdom of Great Britain and Ireland, Portugal, France, Germany, to which must be added Belgium, the Netherlands, the United States, then a second circle of countries intended to confirm the general assent, Austria, Hungary, the United Kingdoms of Sweden and Norway, Denmark, Italy, the Ottoman Empire, and the Russian Empire. The Europeans forgot to invite African leaders to this event which will forever seal their fate. The issues to be addressed during the conference concern freedom of trade in the Congo Basin, freedom of navigation for the Congo and Niger River Basin, the definition of the rules to be observed for future occupations that will occur on the African coasts. The reasons given to support the partition of Africa was based on the civilizing mission. According to them, all the decisions taken were to open Africa to civilization and to the benefit of economy and trade in a world moving towards progress. This civilizing mission also aimed to achieve the abolition of slavery in Central Africa. This was despite treaties and prohibitions still practiced at that time in the Kingdom of Zanzibar, which was nevertheless protected by England, which abolished slavery in 1838 and defined as a barbaric act. The development of Africa through trade was also discussed. By opening up Africa to international trade, we are starting a development process that could only be beneficial for the populations and help them move forward on the path of civilization. They said.
Jules Ferry, chairman of the board at the time in France, will even rely on such foundations. However, such an overflow of humanism and desire for assistance does not stand up well to the examination of the fact that followed the conference. In Berlin, the question of dividing Africa into delimited and administrated zones was explicitly not on the agenda of the conference. It did not figure in the final acts, even though it haunted people's minds and occupied an essential part in the corridor conversations that accompanied the official sciences. The British in particular had no interest in establishing borders or politically controlling these territories. Their idea was quite simple, to trade with the natives and to control the trading areas. It was easier and more convenient. Exercising direct administration will have been a burden. The first state whose borders will be defined during the conference is the Greater Congo. King Leopold II of Belgium received on a personal basis two and a half million square kilometers which will later become the Congo Free State. In the northwest of the state, formed on the right bank of the Congo River, more than 500,000 square kilometers belong to France. France is also assigned the interior part of Niger, whose delta is controlled by the United Kingdom. Portugal abandons its claims to the north of the Congo estuary, except for the enclave of Cabinda. We are on February 26, 1885, the last day of the conference. Only the borders of Congo of Leopold II are decided with precision. Future borders will have to be established according to very specific rules which are of humanitarian and legal nature. Concerning the humanitarian field, the signatories of the final act of Berlin are committed to abolishing slavery in African territories, establishing freedom of conscience, banishing barbaric customs, namely humanitarian sacrifices, bringing to Africa the benefit of conscience. Then we have the legal domain, which stipulates that any colonial power installed on the coast has the right to the interland until it encounters another power or a natural obstacle. Any occupation of a territory by power must be reported to the other signatory countries of the Berlin Final Act and must be occupied militarily. The Congo, explored by Savonien de Braza, is recognized as French. The Congo, prospected by Stanley, is granted as the property of King Leopold II of Belgium and has free access to the sea. But Portugal retains the enclave of Cabinda. So the Berlin Conference quite simply established the rules for dividing up the African continent. Also, it did not end the tensions between the European powers, as shown by the Fashoda Crisis of 1898, which opposed France to England. Some nations will even later use their power to violate the Berlin Treaty. This is the case of the United Kingdom. Indeed, the Portuguese government has presented a project known as the Rose Card, in which the colonies of Angola and Mozambique were united on an east-west axis. The countries gathered, with the exception of the United Kingdom, were ready to endorse this project. In 1890, the British government, in violation of the Treaty of Windsor and the Treaty of Berlin itself, issued an ultimatum demanding that the Portuguese withdraw from the area between the two colonies. 
This space will be 10 years later occupied by the Rhodesia of the British Protectorate in South Central Africa, also known as BSCA, now the independent country of Zambia. After the Berlin Conference, many other treaties will be signed, especially to define the limits between the colonies. 87% of the current borders are the result of treaties signed between 1890 and 1912. Africa was divided on paper without taking into account the sociological realities on the ground. It was carved into territories with artificial and arbitrary borders which divide divided and still divide Africans. This balkanization has destabilized the ethnic tribal balance and fueled the tensions that still cause many fratricidal conflicts. It is important to emphasize that the Africans valiantly defended themselves, contrary to popular belief. Despite the firepower of the settlers' weapons, there were, in the majority, great and noble resistance fighters who lost their lives. Black youth must know this and remember this forever. Our ancestors fought for their freedom, for their independence. They succeeded by their tenacity in making the Westerners give in, even if ultimately it was not total independence because our African countries are still under Western domination. So our generation and the one that will follow must tell themselves that if our people have succeeded in doing so, we must not give up in the face of adversity. Today, our chains are mental, financial, religious, historical, and so on. But it is up to us to do everything possible to free ourselves from it, in every possible way, in order to regain our former position. Let's put our hope in ourselves and hold our heads up high, and we will rise up stronger. Courtesy of Unombe Guillombi and Africa Media. That's the end of the ABB show. Today's topic was about the Berlin Conference. If you enjoyed the podcast, share it massively. Our next episode will probably be on the disastrous consequences of the Berlin Conference. But in the meantime, remember to subscribe to our channel. Activate the notification bell so you won't miss any of our next episode. I'm Abibi. Follow me on facebook.com slash abibie123. Also, remember to send your comments and topic request to abibi1 at gmail.com. See you and remember to tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend about the Abibi Show. <laughs>